good evening all uh, today i'm going to deliver a lecture on introduction to transmission line towers let's start presentation outline i'll be briefing about what is transmission line tower in the introduction part uh, then tower types tower geometry electrical clearances design parameters loadings design of tower members and tower foundations so i'll be just briefing each one of them in a very short uh, notice or in a very short period so that uh, it is understandable power which is being produced from one uh, end of a place is introduction power plants produce power and this power has to be transmitted to the Uh, end uses so in the process of transmission uh, we use this transmission line structures the process of transmitting power from one end to the end user we call it as transmission and distribution normally transmission refers to higher voltages in indian scenario we call transmission lines uh, from 66 kv to 1200 kv and distribution system as uh, kvs which are less than 66 usually we use conductors uh, which are uninsulated to transmit power and we have earthways to protect these conductors from lightning and thunderstorms uh, transmission line towers are going to support these conductors um, in such a way that they don't uh, affect the common man or the life structures which are uh, transmitting power we call them as transmission line structures uh, in transmission line structures we have two types one is called as poles the other one is towers poles are normally used up to 33 kv uh, poles are made up of uh, circular cross section either it is built up or uh, for a smaller sections for smaller kv we will be using uh, ready made sections and it can be a single pole a monopole or a bipole uh, for um, higher uh, voltage levels we are using lattice type structures called as towers uh, so we normally adopt these towers from 33 kv to 1200 kv uh, and towers are normally uh, truncated uh, square pyramid shapes which have cross arms to hold the conductors and earth wire okay the height and uh, width of the tower increases with the increase in voltage levels this picture uh, depicts about the uh, transmission and distribution system so pr- from the power plant uh, we produce power this power will be like uh, stepped up and uh, transmitted through the transmission towers okay and then it will be brought to the distribution substations where they are stepped down to 33 kv or 11 kv and then like they are again are uh, distributed again from each uh, loca- locality we have a sub- receiving substation they are going to step down still to the end users it may be 230 volts or 400 volts so depending upon the consumer's need it will be stepped down so the this process of uh, transmitting and uh, distributing power is normally done across the world and uh, this picture talks about pole and tower the left side which is a pole uh, normally we adopt it for lower voltage levels and on the right side we have self supporting tower self supporting means it doesn't need any additional guys to uh, hold to stand okay uh, towers are normally made up of steel angle sections and poles are normally made up of steel plates uh, welded together to make a circular uh, tapered circular cross section tower types uh, towers have been classified under uh, different categories first one uh, types based on constructional features self supporting towers uh, guide towers and chain towers self supporting towers are one which doesn't need additional guys or additional support to stand so they themselves stand with the help of the four legs and the lattices okay so we call them as self supporting uh, guide towers are one which has a beam at the top and two column arrangements 
and this has been supported by guys on all the sides at least two sides you will find the guys okay so they have been uh, <coughs> attached to the ground so the tower is not overturning same with china tower uh, instead of a beam at the top we are using the same guys from where the insulators will be hung <coughs> and they will be utilized uh, i mean they will be uh, used for the power transmission so the difference is that here we don't have a steel beam in case of china towers whereas in guide tower we have a lattice beam at the top tower types based on configuration uh, so this uh, this comes with the arrangement of uh, conductors so the first one we call them as horizontal towers where all the three conductors are placed at uh, same level so normally single circuit towers are uh, with horizontals it can be also with vertical towers but normally we adopt single circuit uh, for horizontal towers vertical towers where the conductors are placed one above the other so ryb are pieces are placed one above the other uh, depending upon the arrangement of the tower cross section so we call it as a cat head tower it looks like a cat head and that shape is like where we have two vertical columns which have been interlinked with beams steel beams uh, lattice in fact lattice beams from there the power has been transmitted the image on the left side uh, is a typical image for a horizontal tower so where we can see like uh, three conductors have been placed at the same level so this is called as a horizontal tower and on the right side uh, we can see that conductors uh, are placed one above the other left side we have three cross arms on right side we have three cross arms so and above we have a, a square so this arrangement is called as a vertical tower h type tower uh, two columns are there in between we have lattice steel beams which have been connected to make it as a single structure uh, so this is the arrangement so it looks like a h and cat type tower uh, the arrangement uh, of the tower okay so arrangement of the conductor and the shape of the tower looks like a head of a cat so we call it as cat head type tower transmission line uh, tower types based on uh, other features so depending upon the uh, hanging of insulation insulators we call them as either suspension or tension so in case of a suspension tower we drop the we hung the insulator from the tip of the cross arm so it is like freely hanging so we call it a suspension and in case of a tension tower uh, the insulator is being placed horizontally so which is also participating in the tension so always the insulator will be in tension uh, and transposition tower is electrical requirement where the ryb bases are changed so because of that we call them as transposition tower in special towers are there uh, where uh, it needs some special attention For example river crossing towers or railway crossing towers road crossing towers communication line crossing towers where uh, the requirement of the tower is slightly increased so we have to take care of all the natural calamities because once built we cannot disturb it so easily so we need to have some additional features uh, in design or in the height calculations so that is why we call them as special towers now coming to suspension tower on the picture on the left side so we can clearly see that from the tip of cross arm we are uh, hanging a insulator at, at the bottom end of the insulator the conductors have been fixed okay so this is called a suspension type tower normally we use the suspension type tower for <coughs> small angles like 0 to 2 degrees okay or we call them as suspension towers and then uh, image for the tension tower normally uh, we provide two insulators for tension towers one on either side of the cross arm um, so that the power is not communicated to the communicate uh, power is not transmitted to the structure okay so in order to have the continuous flow of power so what we do is like we are hanging the conductor so we call it as a jumper okay so this jumper helps in transmitting the power such a way that uh, the power is not disturbing the 
transmission line tower itself. Left side, it shows the arrangement of a transmission tower. So where the faces are changed from uh, top to bottom. Okay, so the places are rearranged. Faces are rearranged. So we call it as a transposition tower. <coughs> River crossing towers will have additional heights considering the high flood level. And uh, it has some additional features in design. So we call them as uh, river crossing. Normally they are of additional height. Same way we design this railway crossing and road crossing towers with special care. So uh, the left side image shows a tower line, transmission line crossing the railways. And on the other side, um, it's a horizontal tower which is placed above the roads. Um, for design purposes, we divide uh, towers based on angle of deviation. So we call them as um, suspension tower, then small angle towers, medium angle towers, large angle towers, and dead end towers. So uh, this is the classification given in IS802 part one, section one. Suspension tower, we call it as A type tower. Deviation angle is between zero to two degrees. And our type of uh, insulator is suspension. So we always put the insulation in suspension. Then small angle towers, uh, we call it as B, tower type B. So uh, the angle of deviation is from two to 15 degrees. Medium angle tension towers, we call it as C type tower. And it is 15 degrees to 30 degrees in deviation. Large angles, uh, D type towers, 30 degrees to 60 degrees and dead end towers, let's say start and end of the transmission line towers, we have this dead end towers, uh, we call it as E type towers. And, uh, the deviation is not there, but it is uh, called as DE. Now, except the suspension towers, all other towers will have uh, tension type insulators. Okay, so, um, No, uh, this is a pictorial representation of uh, different types of uh, towers based on angle of deviation. A-type towers are normally placed in straight lines uh, or where the deviation is not greater than uh, 2 degrees. And then B-type de towers are like placed between 2 to 15 degree deviation. Okay, and these towers are slightly oriented um, along the direction of turn. Okay, so for example, if C type tower which has 30 degree deviation, then the tower is like slightly rotated 15 degrees. So it is like 15 degrees on one side and 15 degrees on the other side, such a way that it we are reducing the forces on the tower. Okay, the large angle we call it is D type tower, and we have the dead end tower which is near the substation, either the receiving substation or the sending substation. Now, again, our towers have been classified based on circuits as single circuit towers, double circuit towers, and multiple circuit towers. So we can have either one circuit, two circuits, three or four circuits. So depending upon the electrical requirement, so we are calling it a single circuit, double circuit, and multiple circuit towers. And based on voltages, uh, we classify them as 33 kV, 66 kV, 110 kV, 132 kV, 220 kV, 400 kV, and 800, 800 kV. <clears throat> so single circuit tower where we have one single uh, circuit, either it can be of horizontal arrangement or vertical arrangement. Um, only one uh, circuit is going on, R, Y, and B. Double circuit, we have uh, two circuits. Normally we go with the vertical arrangement. Uh, cross arms are projected on either side of the tower and on each side, we have a single circuit. So on the left side of the tower, we have uh, three R, Y, and B conductors, and similarly on the right side. Multi-circuit tower, we have two towers, uh, two circuits on each side, okay, arranged vertically. A few of the terms which we have to be familiar with transmission line towers. Uh, one is conductor, which is the wire carrying current. Uh, we classify them as uh, all alike, alum, all alike aluminum conductor, triple AC, 
all aluminum conductor AAC, aluminum core steel reinforced ACSR, or aluminum core uh, <coughs> composite reinforced. Normally we use this. And earth wire, uh, this is the wire, steel wire, which has been used for protection from lightning and thunderstorm. So they are normally of two types. One is a normal earth wire and the other one is OPG, OPGW or we call it as optical ground wire, uh, which has communication uh, cables inbuilt. Then insulator, insulator is the device which is going to protect us from the live current, live power. So uh, insulators are made of different kinds of materials. Normally we use uh, porcelain materials or we have insulators made of glass and composite materials. And depending upon the type of uh, arrangement, we call insulators as suspension. That is like one end is being hung and it is like vertically arranged. Tension, it has been put horizontally along the line of transmission line. V-string, uh, in a few places we use V-string where uh, the rotation of the cable is restricted. Example, the middle, conductor of horizontal tower we use this v-string then a few places we call we use this pilot insulator uh, large angle towers with the outer turning on the outside of the turning we use this in order to protect the jumper to uh, touch from the tower body and then depending upon the number of conductors carried at each crossom it can be between one to six. So we call it as a single conductor, then double, triple, quad, quadruple, then penta or exa. So we can go up to six wires and each will be like segregated or it will be spaced uh, using spaces. From one conductor at a crossom to six conductors at a crossom, we can go. Now these are images of uh, conductors, uh, which normally we use it for this transmission line. So again, these images, uh, different types, all aluminum conductors, all aluminum alloy conductors, aluminum <coughs> uh, conductors, alloy reinforced or composite reinforced, then aluminum uh, conductors, steel reinforced. Same earth wire on the left side, we, what we call it as a normal earth wire. It doesn't have any optical cables inside it whereas the right hand one right side we call it as optical earth wire um, this has been used for uh, communication also apart from uh, protecting the lines from thundering and uh, lightning thunderstorm and lightning insulators uh, this is a typical porcelain insulators and insulator length increases with the increase in voltage so uh, this plays a major role in the transmission line towers. Then everyday temperature with the Indian scenario, the average everyday temperature has been considered as 32 degrees. Maximum temperature, which a conductor could have during the power transmission is uh, ACSR type of conductors 75 degrees and the AAC is 85 degrees. And for all earth wires, we consider it as 53 degrees. The minimum temperature we consider is zero degrees in normal Indian uh, tropical region okay in case of snowy regions we might consider it as uh, minus five degrees and then all this uh, towers have been designed to resist some uh, loads so we call it uh, we use a term called return period so it is a mean interval between the uh, recurrence of a climatic event of defined magnitude it can be a cyclone so we call it as return period and then reliability, uh, it is defined as a probability that a system would uh, perform uh, its functions, um, perform function its task under designed load conditions. So normally this is the service conditions that is day-to-day -day life where we don't have cyclones or we don't have any extreme temperature. So the normal one uh, is the reliability condition. And in order to protect from any major collapse, we use the a term called security so reliability security and the third one is safety uh, this is to protect the lineman and the workers from injuries and loss of life so three major criterion for transmission line uh, towers one is reliability 
the other one is security the third one is safety the in order to protect these transmission line towers from external disturbances like fall of tree or uh, building construction obstructions so we have uh, uh, we have to provide some space on either side of the tower and this space is called as right of way or transmission corridor depending upon the voltage level the code books have been given with uh, different uh, right of ways then depending upon the wires intact with the uh, with the tower we define them as normal condition or broken wire condition broken wire condition uh, is like where uh, one or few more wires have been cut off then what is the effect on tower in case of its structural stability and strength so we have to design for both normal condition as well as for this broken wire conditions this image uh, gives us the knowledge or the information about right of way so the middle one between the cross arms end of cross arms we call it as the wire zone and either side we need to provide some buffer zone uh, we call it as border zone so the cumulative of border zones and wire zone we call it as right of way or transmission corridor so we have to ensure that this transmission line is not being affected by uh, tree falling or human obstructions like construction of buildings other things so that uh, the line is not disturbed uh, these are the standard uh, right of way which have been followed in india depending upon the kv uh, levels that is voltage levels right of way have been given for example 400 kv line we have to have 52 meters uh, total width that is like 26 meters on either side from the center of the tower <coughs> tower geometry now uh, we have to make a tower so tower at some components or what we call it as anatomy tower anatomy so the following components uh, may be there so depending upon the type of tower we have uh, define them components for example peak uh, cross arms boom cage tower body extension and stuff now <clears throat> on the left side uh, this tower is a single circuit tower uh, which has a peak that is like one single earth wire so then we arrange this arrangement a cone kind of arrangement so we call it as a peak okay the projections where the conductor is being suspended this cantilever projections are called as cross arms okay uh, the portion of the tower between the cross arms top and the bottom cross arm we call it as the cage and portion below the bottom most cross arm we call it as tower body and the arrangement we call it as this uh, diagonal or inverted k we call them as bracings horizontal members in the tower okay we call them as belts and uh, normally what we do is like we design the towers from uh, for additional extensions because the ground profile will be different so in order to support them what we do is like we have like three meters six meters nine meters extensions body extensions so that we don't design a tower again and again so tower will be designed for zero degree extension zero meters extension then three meters six and nine normally and it all depends upon the serving and the requirement of the region and the uh, towers have uh, stub angles which are being embedded in the foundation okay so the angle projection um, which will be same as the leg or slightly bigger than that we call it as uh, stub angle and then uh, this column uh, part or the chimney part which has been projected to 25 mm above the ground level so in order to protect the steel from corrosion so we elevate this concrete portion uh, to 25 mm above the ground level okay and depending upon the type of soil the foundation type will vary it can be isolated it can be a raft or it can be deep foundation okay now uh, image on the right side which is a double circuit vertical tower 
okay so here uh, the difference is that we have ground wire crossum in the previous one we did not have a ground wire crossum we had a peak in this one we'll be having the ground wire crossum and uh, this image on the left side instead of ground wire crossum we can have this arrangement we call them as horns horns okay so this is a double circuit vertical tower the right side is a single circuit horizontal tower so where uh, we have peaks and the boom boom is nothing but the steel beam arrangement lattice again lattice type beam okay so which will have uh, the support for conductors the insulators will be hung from here and the conductors are being held by the insulators and this portion uh, in vertical towers the portion below the bottom cross arm okay we call it as waist level and in case of uh, horizontal tower we can clearly see it's the narrow portion we call it as the waist Now coming to bracing types, uh, bracing is depending upon the size of the tower. We provide different kinds of bracing from single web, double web, crack system, uh, portal system, or diagonal bracing, multiple bracing. Uh, same way we can go with combination. Normally at the fields, what we see is like we see the combination of inverted K, that's the portal system and the diagonal. So at the bottom most panels, two or three panels, we provide this inverted key, and then uh, Above that, we have normal diagonal system. And the dotted lines here represents the redundant members. Uh, so those redundants help in uh, reducing the effective length of the main members, either it be leg or bracings or belts. So it can be made. Now, to determine tower height, so tower height is governed by uh, ground clearance, sag, uh, then spacing between the conductors vertically, the location of ground wire, angle of shield, the minimum width span clearance, then tension insulator drop, that is the jumper drop. Okay, so ground clearance is given by the electrical requirements. So depending upon the voltage level, we have the uh, ground clearance. Uh, then uh, sag is what we are going to calculate sag and tension. So we take the maximum sag. Maximum sag normally happens at uh, maximum temperature, no wind condition. So that is the criteria that we are going to take. Then vertical spacing of conductors, uh, either it, it has been given by the electrical team or we are going to calculate it by uh, the electrical clearances. Okay. And then uh, location of ground wire. So it can be a single ground wire or it can be double. So depending upon that, so the height of the tower again is slightly going to modify. And again, the height of the tower, that is like placing of ground wire, um, depends upon the angle of shield. Okay, so if the angle of shield is wide or it is bigger, then we are we will end up in a shorter height. Hence, the height will be increased by a few, few mm, okay, or few centimeters then minimum width span clearance has to be maintained because uh, the electrical uh, conductors and the earth wire will not have the same amount of sag and creep so in order to maintain uh, the conductors to protect it from the earth wire itself okay so we have to maintain this mid span clearance again this has been uh, given by the electrical team or we can take it from cbip manual uh, so with that we'll be able to determine them uh, height of the tower and same with tension drop okay in case of suspension towers we have we hung the suspension tower in case of tension towers uh, we have this uh, jumper drop so depending upon all these parameters the height of the tower is being fixed coming to tower width so it's the role of civil engineers to fix the tower width we have to determine three widths one is at the ground level the second one is at the waist level, that is below bottom cross arm in case of vertical towers, and then at the topmost cross arm level, okay, in case of um, vertical towers, or boom level in case of horizontal towers. Now, these three uh, widths are with the civil engineers. Either you design it as a wide uh, base tower or a narrow base tower, it all depends upon. Now, increase in width of uh, tower will reduce the weight, reduce in weight up to a certain level. Same way, if you use narrow tower, the weight of the tower will be very high. So in order to counter that, we have to find out 
uh, normal uh, width or the optimum width with which we can go with reduced weight okay so for tension towers normally we adopt l by 4 as the width of tower and uh, sorry h by 4 where h is the overall height of the tower and in case of uh, uh, suspension towers we use l by sorry h by 6 okay cross arm projections uh, this is the arrangement which has been uh, made for the conductor to be suspended okay uh, for uh, insulator i mean this depends upon the insulator then swing angle of the insulators or jumper drop okay uh, then phase to phase horizontal spacing so this is again an electrical requirement based on which we are going to determine the cross arm projection now coming to electrical clearances so we have some minimum specifications uh, quoted by cbip which we have to follow so they have given uh, different types of clearances um, the following are the and a few of them have been uh, displayed so like minimum ground clearances angle of shield all those things have been displayed in this ppt so now the what are those uh, ground i mean electrical clearances the first is the minimum ground clearance then clearances above water bodies like uh, rivers and other things then swing angle and clearances of for towers that is like the insulator or the jumper drop how much it can swing and what must be the clearance we have to maintain then angle of shield for the earth wire so how a uh, good it can protect then clearances between earth wire and conductor at the mid span level and clearances for power line crossing uh, railway line crossing communication crossings etc now ground clearance um, this is the minimum ground clearance which we have to follow for example 400 kv line so we have to maintain 8.8 meters then clearances above lakes or uh, rivers then for example 400 kv 6.4 assuming like there is no navigation or movement above the water level <clears throat> then angle of shield uh, so this image talks about the angle of shield so we place the earth wire earth wire has to protect these conductors um, from lightning and thunderstorm so normally these earth wires have the capacity from 20 degrees to 30 degrees protection okay so depending upon the earth wires protection level so the height of the tower slightly modifies for example 400 kv 20 degrees is the angle of deviation sorry angle of shield then we have to ensure that uh, this protecting angle is less than 20 maximum of 20 at least less than 20 so that means like depending upon the projection of cross arm the height of the peak or the earth wire cross arm will go up or will protrude additionally mid span clearance again uh, at the middle level uh, between two towers okay so we have to maintain some clear gap between the uh, cross arm and the uh, sorry between the conductor and the ground wire okay example 400 kv 9 meters we have to maintain then swing angles now uh, we are going to put a uh, suspension type tower a uh, suspension type insulator or tension type insulator in case of suspension type insulator we are going to hang the uh, insulator vertically from the tip of the cross arm and in case of tension towers even though the insulators are placed horizontally along the line of transmission towers or along the transmission line but we have the jumper which is going to transmit power okay to make the continuity so this jumper or insulator can swing under heavy wind okay so the protection angle or sorry the minimum angle and its uh, electrical clearance like the protection uh, air clearance has been given okay so for example this is a 400 kv line okay, insulator is around like 6 meters 6 to 6.5 meters and here uh for 0 degree swing we have 3050 mm clearance for 20 degrees we have 3050 mm clearance and for 40 degrees it is 1860 okay so depending upon this what we have to do is like we are going to draw envelope okay so draw three circles from the center of the con uh, conductor okay so from there we are going to make this envelope 
okay we call it as clearance envelope so this clearance envelope should not touch the tower body so if it is touching then project the cross arm so depending upon this the cross arm projection is determined for the various voltage levels the clearances on the swing angles have been given for both suspension string as well as the jumper design parameters um, we have seen the different types of tower based on configuration arrangement of circuits then uh, voltage levels uh, structural arrangement like uh, self supporting guide tower chani tower now other design parameters we need to know the span so uh, spacing between any two towers we call it as a span we call them as normal span or rolling span or governing span or design span okay so four different names for a single span normal span or rolling span or governing span or design span okay <coughs> wind span uh, wind span is nothing but sum of uh, off spans on either side of a tower okay so this this is normally taken as the normal span okay so wind span we consider is as equal to normal span now depending upon the voltage level cbip manual has given some standard maximum uh, spans which can be adopted okay so for example 400 kv 400 meters so that means like 400 kv lens we can have the maximum tower spacing is uh, or the spacing between the towers is 400 meters it can be less than that then weight span since the conductors are been put in a parabolic profile or it has a sag so the length of the wire will be additional so what we try to do is like we it, we take some additional lengths at least 50% more than the rolling span okay now this image talks about weight span normal span and uh, wind span so three towers are there in a single line so from center of this uh, two towers to the center of the other two towers we call it as the wind span or the design span rolling span governing span or normal span okay and from the lower most point that is the maximum sag point to the maximum sag point we call it as uh, weight span okay so that is like from this bottom most point to this bottom most point the conductor's weight will be taken up by this tower this uh, right hand side uh, from the bottom most point to the next tower will be taken by the tower on the right side okay now depending upon the voltage levels uh, terrain profile and tower type uh, we have different uh, weight spans okay for both uh, normal condition as well as broken wire condition and we have two different ones i mean two different maximum and minimum because uh, what are the possibilities so sometimes uh, the maximum span is 375 and minimum it can be like uh, less than that so in order to counter that so what we have done is like uh, we have to consider both the things in design so while we are designing we have to take maximum span minimum span and same with broken wire conditions when wires are not intact what will be the amount contributed okay so but still one portion of the wire will be in contact with the tower so how much will be uh, considered so that is normally 60% of the normal span and we have a minimum and a few places we have uh, negative that means like uh, it is like uh, pull rather than uh, acting in the direction of gravity this uh, load will be like acting against the gravity okay so since towers are of different heights uh, the taller tower tower will try to pull uh, the wire from the uh, shorter tower so then we will encounter this uplift okay no wind load wind load calculations are based on gust wind factor uh, uh, which has been given in is 875 a very similar method has been adopted here uh, we find i mean uh, we obtain the basic wind speed from the wind map of india so the wind map wind zones have been divided into six for the indian uh, terrain okay so depending upon uh, the location we can obtain the basic wind speed okay so this wind speed will be converted into a reference wind speed by uh, dividing it by a factor of 1.375 so we are going to convert 3 uh, seconds gust velocity 
to a distributed 10 minute um, speed, average speed. So we call it as a reference wind speed. We are adopting 1.375, whereas in IS875, they have given different factors for K0. This is the typical uh, wind zone map of India, which uh, we are using it from IS875 part 3. Reliability levels. So, so before uh, going with the different uh, wind zone calculations, we need to know about two different terms. One is reliability level, the other one is terrain category. Reliability level is like um, what must be the return period for a climatic load, okay, cyclone or anything. So depending upon the reliability level, the loads will increase. Okay, reliability level one, return period is 50 years. Uh, so transmission line towers must be designed uh, such a way that it encounters cyclone once in 50 years kind of thing. Okay, uh, a major cyclone. Okay, uh, so the reliability level or the return uh, or the return period is 50 years. It is used up to 400 uh, kilovolt class. Then reliability level two, uh, 150 years of return period. And this has been adopted for lines which have uh, been which are like 400 kV and above. Now this 400 kV falls on both the places depending upon the client's requirement. Either it can be taken as reliability level one or reliability level two. More the reliability level, then uh, more will be the load. Reliability level three is 500 years return period. And this is normally adopted for special towers like river cross. Terrain category for winds, um, wind loads, we need to know about the terrain categories, whether the terrain is open or it has some obstructions or it has heavy obstructions. Now category one is open terrain. Uh, or the maximum height of obstruction is 1.5 meters. And terrain category two is like where uh, medium obstructions are there, scattered obstructions, um, whose height fall between uh, 1.5 meters to 10 meters. And category three is like where we have closely spaced obstructions. That is like cities where the obstruction heights are greater than 10 meters. Now, once we have calculated the reference wind speed, converted it, the reference wind speed into design wind speed by multiplying it with risk coefficient and terrain roughness coefficient, these values have been given in the code. Okay. And then convert the design wind speed into design wind pressure using the equation 0.6 times uh, design speed uh, to the power 2. Now, what code book has made this like IS802 part 1 section 1. Uh, for different reliability levels and different terrain categories and different wind zones, they're given the wind uh, pressure, design wind pressure. So we need not calculate every time. So for example, reliability level two, terrain category two and wind zone five, we can pick it up 1010 Newton per meter square. Uh, so the calculation part has been reduced. For determining height uh, of a tower, we are in need of sag and tension calculation. Now, sag is nothing but the dip of uh, wire when it has been uh, hung over two points. Okay, so we consider it to be parabolic in shape. This uh, sag and tension are inversely proportional. More sag, less tension. Uh, less sag, more tension will happen in the wire. And uh, the sag is being uh, affected by weight of the wire span between the towers, then uh, tension in the wire, wind and temperature. And normally the maximum sag happens at maximum wind, uh, maximum temperature and nil wind conditions, no wind. Tension is normally generated because of pull of conductor and, will, uh, and wind. Okay, so we have to balance tension as well as sag. So we are going to arrange the wire with the particular amount of that, such a way that the tension in the conductor is not exceeding the permissible limits. Now we in order to uh, find out sag and tension calculations and to keep the system under control, we have some criteria or the limitations uh, or the limits where uh, uh, the tension in the wire is restricted, I mean is kept under control. For example, maximum tension, everyday temperature, and no wind. Uh, <clears throat> conductor cannot be uh, 
extension beyond 25 percentage of its ultimate tensile strength for 220 kV line. Okay, the same way they've given different criteria and what we have to uh, maintain is that the fire sag should not exceed the 90 percentage of the conductor sag for any temperature and, and any wind condition. Okay, so we take these conditions as a starting condition. Okay, so with this starting condition, we try to calculate sag for different uh, wind. For example, no wind, full wind, 0.75 times full wind, 0.36 full wind. Okay, and for different uh, temperatures. So everyday temperature, maximum temperature of conductor, maximum temperature of earth wire, and minimum temperature. So four different temperatures and four different wind conditions. So with this, we try to find out uh, the sag and tension. If anything exceeds, then we start that as a starting condition. Then again, we re rework in such a way that we achieve uh, all these uh, tensions are within the limits. So coming to loads, uh, we have uh, three distinct categories of load. Uh, one is called as climatic loads, then failure contaminant loads, then construction and maintenance loads. Climatic loads um, is completely dependent or it is related to reliability requirements, that is day-to-day -day life. Uh, so it is like the service condition. And failure contaminant loads corresponds to uh, security requirements, that is broken wire condition. So where uh, the tower has to be protected from collapse. Okay, then construction and maintenance loads are related to require, uh, safety requirements. So where uh, the linemen and the workers have to climb over the tower for maintenance, for stringing everything. So these three are the major classifications um, for the loadings. So for these three conditions, we'll be designing uh, the tower. Now classification based on the direction of action, we have vertical loads that is acting in the direction of gravity, sometimes against the action of gravity. Then transverse loads, normally the wind loads and the mechanical tension in the wire due to deviation. And then longitudinal loads, which are being produced from the pull of the wire. Now for all our design purposes, what we do is like, we need to have some primary loads Okay, for example, to analyze a tower on stat proof. Sulfate, so whatever we model, um, we can obtain the sulfate from the software. Apart from that, we multiply it with 1.3 or 1.35, because like we are going to model only the main structural members. We're not going to model the redundants and bolts. So if we take at least 30 to 35% of the weight of the tower uh, main structural elements as the weight of the redundants and bolts and uh, nuts as well as uh, cleat angles and cover plates. Then wind load on tower which is going to act in the transverse direction. Uh, so that will be calculated separately and added to the stand process separate load keys. Then reliability condition where we have vertical, transverse and longitudinal security conditions, safety conditions and anti cascade okay. um, For all this uh, four, we have this vertical, transverse, and longitudinal loads acting. We have to calculate um, like the vertical loads will be from the weight of the conductors, wires, linemen, everything. Transverse will be from the mechanical tension of due to deviation or wind on the conductors, earth wire insulators. The longitudinal is because of broken wire condition. Okay. Coming to wind loads, uh, wind on tower we have to calculate using effective area method. So what we are going to do is like find out the total uh, area of the tower, then find out the effective area, that is a solid portion, find out the solidity ratio, then find out drag coefficient based on the solidity ratio, then obtain the cusp factor from the code book for its height and type. Okay, then <clears throat> find out the force on the tower then redistribute this i mean uh, distribute this force divide the uh, wind load on all the four points of the tower at each level okay same way on wires on the insulators so this cd represents the drag coefficient g represents the gust response factor 
speed is the design wind pressure it depends upon the height and as well as uh, terrain category zone and reliability level a represents the area in case of uh, tower it is area area effective and in case of insulators it is uh, the surface area half of the surface area and in case of uh, wind load on wires we are going to take l into d considering it as a rectangular projection the cdt and uh, gt values the drag coefficients gust response factors for towers insulators and uh, conductors have been given here now loading conditions um, for different uh, loading conditions that is reliability security safety and anti cascading what must be the wind load considered okay so because of this wind tension is going to increase sag uh, will be slightly modified so for example reliability condition we are going to consider full wind then security condition we are going to consider 75% full wind for suspension tower whereas full wind for tension towers and for 75 percentage of full wind for suspension towers for wind calculation on towers and full wind on uh, tension towers safety conditions and anti cascading we are not going to consider any wind load so no wind condition is considered same with the mechanical component of tension due to deviation happens because like uh, we are going to have uh, deviations in the transmission lines so with taking that as consideration we are going to calculate them with simple uh, trigonometric terms same with longitudinal loads we are going to calculate with the same way the maximum weight of wire minimum weight of wire depends upon the maximum weight span and minimum weight span then uh, <coughs> broken wire conditions now the critical uh load cases for design comes from this broken wire conditions so for different circuits and different type of towers code book has given uh, different broken wire conditions for example single circuit towers and uh, single circuit towers that is inclusive of suspension and tension towers and dead end towers any one piece or any one ground i mean uh, ground wire is broken okay and uh, suspension towers under double circuit and multiple circuit towers any one piece or ground wire broken small and medium angle towers any one piece and ground wire or any two piece on the same side are broken large angle and dead end towers any two pieces and ground wire or any three pieces on the same side whichever gives a stringent measure now uh, any two pieces or any one piece and any ground wire that means like first we are assuming ground wire is cut off then ground wire top arm top cross arm cut off top conductor then ground wire and bottom cross arm bottom conductor then ground wire and middle conductor so we get this uh, three combinations then top conductor and middle conductor being cut off then top and uh, bottom conductor being cut off then middle and bottom being cut off so we get six combinations for this uh, small and medium angle towers same way we will get more uh, for large angle towers under broken wire condition so for each of these case we are going to apply loads calculate loads apply them on the structure find out uh, which one becomes a critical no uh, reliability can i mean uh, this is a big table which talks about different um, loading conditions like reliability uh, security safety and anti cascading and what are the loads we are going to consider so for example reliability wind on wires we are going to consider then deviation load uh, what is the condition full wind or 0.36 f 0.36 full wind whichever gives the stringent value and then uh, wind on insulator then vertical load uh, that is like weight of uh, wires for maximum weight span and minimum weight span then weight of insulators and uh gw clamp that is ground wire clamp maximum and minimum and same way uh, longitudinal load uh, normally we don't have any longitudinal load uh, for this reliability condition except dead end towers because dead end towers are normally under longitudinal pull because we have wire on only one side the other side it is with negligible length 
a very few meters okay so same way uh, we have this calculations for security conditions and safety conditions as well as anti cascading loads now since we have we are calculating these loads as separate load cases wind load as separate dead load as separate and this reliability as separate then we are going to combine them okay because all these loads are going to act simultaneously let us take reliability condition we will have vertical loads transverse loads and longitudinal loads acting simultaneously so we are going to combine them so uh, these are the load combinations which we are adopting normally it is transverse vertical and longitudinal loads acting simultaneously for anti cascading we don't have transverse load we are considering no transverse load so it is only vertical and light load sorry longitudinal load now once we have uh, done with the load calculations analyze the tower using uh, software find out its maximum uh, axial compression retention now we have to go with the design so we are going to uh, design them as either compression or tension member except if it is like inclined uh, less than 15 degrees then we have to check for bending okay so stress analysis uh, calculate uh, calculation of forces under combination of loads that's the result from the analysis then uh, design must be practical and done as a production assignment now depending upon the sizes available angle sizes available we have to adopt and the material requirements like uh, cleat angle cover plates and uh, bolts and nuts and washers so we are going to adopt them then uh, it's completely a space frame we are going to use it use the software so we are not worried about the analysis part we make some few assumptions uh, for analysis for this design of towers uh, we consider it as a pin jointed frame pin jointed space truss okay uh, so it is going to carry only axial loads then bolts bolt slippages should have the same modulus of uh, the tower members modulus of velocity of uh, tower members then uh, shear forces are distributed equally then the torsional shear at the cross arm is resisted by the uh, four faces equally plan plan members without any external loads that is like we provide uh, plan bracings at the level of cross arms bottom member of cross arms if not then they are considered as redundant members and then uh, transverse loads resisted by transverse faces and similarly longitudinal loads are resisted by longitudinal loads as uh, longitudinal faces equally then vertical loads and self weight are equally distributed on all four legs then vertical <coughs> loads at cross arm panel is shared by the web members that is uh, the bracings then torsional loads resisted by four faces in, in is in inverse proportion to the width the members less than 15 degrees inclination must be designed for bending stresses earlier people were using graphical method uh, then uh, analytical methods using method of joints method of sections now since we are having computers so we are going with the 3d analysis uh, where all the load combinations and primary loads are applied and we check for all the possible conditions all for example maximum vertical load minimum vertical load then minimum angle of deviation maximum angle of deviation everything then we try to find out the maximum uh, forces acting on the tower okay or the uh, axial compression and tension which has been developed in the tower members and that will be designed as per that till date we are using working stress method as per is 802 part 1 section 2 then hot roll steel sections are generally adopted um, in fact only angle sections we are using it uh, using in major then uh, since it has been exposed to the atmosphere so minimum thicknesses of members have been defined for example leg it is 5 mm uh, bracing members it is 4 mm so depending upon the importance of the member Uh, for example lower members of cross arm 5 mm upper member can be 4 mm same way uh, depending upon the flange width 
what must be the maximum bolt diameter for example 20 mm bolt we should have minimum 50 mm uh, flange width so 50 mm or greater then we are using fe250 grade steel and fe350 grade steel uh, for the tower members okay. and we are using normally 4.6 grade 5.6 grade and 8.8 .8 grade bolts but the code book is uh, a bit old so they are talking about 4.6 and 5.6 grade bolts then uh, since we all know we have to maintain the slenderness ratios for the compression members so for different uh, tower members we have different slenderness proportions and uh, in order to simplify so we have this slenderness limits based on the type of load acting on the member and its eccentricity okay for example leg members uh, peak all those things will have uh, concentric loads so we call this call them as curve one then cross arm members where we have a uh, frame eccentricity coming to picture so we call it as curve number two and then like uh, uh, lattices curve number three then i mean this all depends upon l by r proportion then if l by r is exceeding 120 then we classify them with the uh, end restraints for example one bolt on either end it is like a pin support then it is curve four two bolts at one end at one bolt at uh, one at the other end then we call it as uh, curve five then two bolts on either end we call it as curve six so the kl by r effective uh, slenderness ratio have been um, slightly modified from the calculated and this kl by r is used for finding out the compressive uh, strength okay so limitations um, leg ground wire uh, peak then cross arm lower members cannot exceed 120 if it is exceeding then in the increase the section or introduce redundant members to break its length bracings we can go up to 200 then redundants we can go up to 250 and tension members uh, it KL by our limitation can go up to 400 so with this as a base we can uh, assume the member sections okay so initially we don't know the member sections initially we assume some member sections and then finally what we do is like round one okay so wind load and dead load will be varying round two so from the analysis of round one design the new sections okay now calculate wind load and uh, sulfate for the new sections again uh, analyze it we get the results of round two for this round two again uh, do the design then third and fourth time then we will get uh, safe sections for all the members okay so it is like at least three to four times we have to do so it is an interactive design so initially you assume some section do the analysis for the analysis result we are going to design for the design sections we are going to analyze it again because wind load and sulfate is modified then from the output of the second round do the design for the third round so it goes on it's like interactive till you feel like all sections have been uh, designed safely okay tension members uh, we can utilize the full strength of the tension members so the only thing is like it shouldn't exceed the 400 in slenderness ratio and then uh, net effective area method is being used because since we are using bolts uh, for connections uh, so we'll be using its cross section losing its cross section so we have to reduce this bolt tools so code books have been given some equations to find out net effective area for uh, steel section so we are adopting this net effective met area method use them for finding out the uh, tension limits same way redundant members a KL by R ratio is limited to, to 250 and normally these have been designed to carry a load of 2.5 percent carried by the main members so if it is supporting leg then 2.5 percent of the leg load or it is from the bracings then 2.5 percent of the bracing or if it is from the belt then 2.5 percent of the 
belt load and normally when it is placed less than 15 degrees we have to check for bending because uh, for maintenance or uh, stringing of uh, wires people climb over the tower then there are possibilities it can be bent and depending upon the type of members on the load acting so the natural forces can be determined leg will be in both compression as well as in tension because wind direction changes lower members of cross arms are normally in compression and upper members of cross arms are in tensions lattices will have both compression as well as tension same way top transverse belts will be in compression and tension all other members are in compression normally longitudinal belts plan bracings transverse belts uh, longitudinal belts will be in tension now this is an idea to uh, know where we'll get tension and where we'll get compression where both can happen coming to bolts uh, bolts we are uh, using 4.6 and 5.6 as per the code but we are up 8.8 bread bolts also and this uh, normally we encounter single shear or double shear and bearing so we do the design for uh, shear and bearing and very rarely tension comes into picture when we put a v string kind of thing okay so normally these bolts are under only shear and bearing then coming to the last part which is a tower foundations uh, since towers are uh, large in size we cannot have anchor bolt arrangement anchor bolts and base plate arrangement so what we do is like we introduce tub angles tub angles are of the same size of the leg members are slightly greater than that we embed it in the foundation so while casting foundation we embed this stub angle leaving some uh, projection outside for connections okay uh, with the same inclination of the leg because this is a truncated square pyramid so we will have inclination in both the vertical planes okay then we adopt either uh, shallow or deep foundations shallow can be isolated or raft depending upon the type of soil again isolated we design different type of foundations for a single transmission line and uh, depending upon the soil encountered along the line then uh, foundation uh, forces or the loads which act on foundations are normally compression uplift and side thrust from longitudinal and uh, transverse directions then addition uh, i mean normally we take additionally 10% load from the reactions uh, we call it as overload factor so towers are designed uh, tower foundations are designed for additional 10% load from the towers so this is a typical image uh, for a tower foundation uh, normally in india we adopt non scaled drawing so uh we don't use a scaled drawing we use a non scaled drawing that is like drawing will be of the same size we change the only the dimensions okay uh we have the foundation i mean the slab at the base a slab can be a rectangular or it can be conical or it can be like uh of this shape or any shape which we adopt okay and this inclination angle must be maintained uh stub will have um, cleats cleats are additional uh, angles which have been embedded in order to increase the bond strength uh, to hold the tower in position okay now uh, we provide reinforcement on uh, both the uh, top and bottom surface of the foundation okay and coming to the type of foundations which we uh, normally adopt is a dry normal dry soil foundation wet soil partially submerged fully submerged black cotton soil partially black cotton soil sandy soil soft rock and hard rock okay so depending upon the type of soil we encounter for each tower we adopt the uh, tower foundation so normally we design all these type of foundations um, so depending upon the locality we adopt okay for example if it is wet then we adopt the wet foundation there if it is like completely dry then the dry foundation as will be adopted for that particular tower depending upon the location and the water level 
water table level. Now coming to the design parameters which we adopt, uh, so minimum structural concrete must be of M20 grid. Then PCC used for uh, placing below the structural concrete is of M10. HVSD bars are used and minimum of 50 mm cover has to be adopted. Then uh, we do three major, four major checks. One is check for bearing. It must be less than uh, safe bearing uh, capacity of the soil. Then check for sliding and overturning. Then check for uplift. Then design of uh, base lab is done for both compression and tension. The column part, uh, which is inclined in both the vertical planes, we call it as chimney. It is nothing but a biaxial bending column with compression and tension. So it can have both compression and tension. So we design it as a biaxial bending column with axial compression or a biaxial bending column with axial tension. Okay. Uh, it is normally taken as a can cantilever projection. Uh, and ties have been provided all around the main reinforcement. We cannot provide ties intermediately, uh, but we can go with diamond uh, arrangement of ties, diamond shaped ties, because we have this tub angle embedded. So uh, we cannot provide um, crucified kind of uh, arrangement in between. So that has to be taken care. So with this, uh, the presentation uh, on introduction to transmission line tower comes to an end. Thank you for your patient listening. Thank you.